You can use the barn however you like. Been waiting all those years for a horse, pony, buggy, and there was one right there. They had a run-down home, and I had a barn. Use <laughs> of a barn. <laughs> Oh, it is a great story. Now, you see, their home now is one of the loveliest homes in the community. See, it's one of the loveliest homes in the community. Instead of worth six, 36 9 now it's worth about, oh, a little over 100000 Yeah, I, I, we wouldn't even want to sell it for 100000 No. But you see, I use that to illustrate the fact that we must be obedient. We must obey and do what Jesus says. Just do what he says. That's it. Yes, I That's trust it. I won't fail and forget that tomorrow or tonight, perhaps. May it be by God's mercy and yes, grace that we can remember. That I'll remember. That's true, John. Me it's too, true. Sir. Me too. See, me too. Me also. It's by his mercies that I make it every step of the way to do exactly what the Holy Spirit says. When the Lord revealed to me that this precious brother and his lovely wife were to leave that beautiful, beautiful Baptist assignment in uh, South Charleston, West Virginia, eight or nine hundred people, and they loved them so much. I tell you, it's a weeping morning when they resigned, and God revealed to me that they were to leave there and go to Muskegon, where they didn't so much as have a church. Sure. When God revealed to me that they were to go, he fell on his face in the carpet. I mean, fell, because I, I know that he was esteemed highly in that 735 churches and could have been the president of the convention sometime. And yet he was willing, he and his wife, to just leave, leave it all, wander up there and come down to a place where they didn't have so much as have a building. And we were privileged. It's like oh. being set free. Oh! <laughs> My God! Oh. Oh, that gets in my heart with power. <laughs> I'm thrilled now. Oh, oh, I got more out of it oh, now right. than I it did was, before. I got was, more out of it than I did that night, surely, or close to it. It was really Oh, I'm about to shout. <laughs> it was wonderful. To oh, think they left prestige and notoriety and wonderful. popularity and highly esteem of men and uh, loved, and his wife was the president of that uh, ladies, what did you call it? I can't... The, uh, West Virginia Baptist Women's Conference. That's right. The chairman of yes, it. the chairman. And they left all of that to go to a place where the Holy Spirit revealed and he Amen. felt at liberty. Yes, sir. Like the chains were gone. Oh, brother. I mean, Jenny and I, uh, that, that night, or the rest of the, the night, were so excited in joy. <laughs> Uh, it, <laughs> I trust you understand this because the people where we were were precious and there were no oh, trouble were or anything like that. They were marvelous. But we were just ready to go then. Well, right we were, now. Yeah, we were just, I mean, in our, in our hearts. Yeah. Isn't that true, sweetheart? It was uh, going home when we drove off. I mean, there wasn't a tear. There was, I mean, we were so joyous in going to Muskegon. Yes. It was so great that you know our friends our loved ones you know we said goodbye but boy when we drove out that night it was joy unspeakable i mean we were heading home we we knew it it was exciting it was thrills oh so it, it's a wonderful story and we're thankful to jesus Hallelujah. oh to think to think if you could all see the wonder of that God had to do it. Yeah. Still doing it. <laughs> it wasn't just like moving someplace that we knew about. See, we had never been to Muskegon. No, 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 not at all. Uh, we really had not had many conversations with Bill McPhail. No. Uh, we had no idea, you know, the about type living of people or, where you or anything. Live. No. Oh, it was different than we imagined. <laughs> oh, it was all the really different. <laughs> I mean, when we got to Muskegon, it was different than what oh, we were expecting. <laughs> oh, it was really different. <laughs> True. Almost. And so, it, you know, but it was wonderful. But see, what a testimony. See, Jesus helping, because when we, when we left, 
See, we could just say in confidence that God was leading. We see, we knew the Lord was leading us there. And it wasn't going, they assume when you move from one church to another, you're going to a, a better place. See, yeah, when most in, people in, assume that. They assume. And so many would come and say, well, we always knew that you'd go on to something better. You know, or you, but it was so wonderful to be able to say, well, you know, we have never even been there. No. We just know that God is leading us there. We don't even have a home there. No. We don't even know what the salary will be. No. <laughs> and it was so wonderful to see what a testimony to Jesus and how he leads because we didn't know. No, not at all. And to try to convey to the people that, uh, that Jesus was taking there and and it wasn't what they were, no. what the world considers moving up, so to speak. Yeah, that's so true. it was great. Yeah. So it was, it's by God's grace. See, it was just setting us free into liberty, and, and we're very appreciative. Oh, oh, Jesus, we're so yeah. grateful. So grateful. Amen. How the Lord worked. So that illustrates the fact that we're not called to go from one community to another, but in this community we can obey the Lord where we are in the little things. And having prayer with someone, witnessing to someone, making a call. The Lord said, someone, you call them, you have a little time with them on the telephone, they said, this is exactly what I needed this morning. I, the Lord told me to call them one day when they were in Ohio, and I called them, Virginia said, Roger is he is so bad that he can't get out of bed. He's, he's just so weak and sickly. He doesn't know what's, what's the matter with him. So I began to pray for him. Now see, I'm 97 miles from him. The Holy Spirit told me to call. Trying to illustrate that we need to be obedient. Amen. So I start praying for him, and I find out the first thing that's his burden. Then I found out the second burden, the third burden, the fourth burden, the fifth burden, the sixth burden. When I got to the sixth burden, how did you feel? Like I've been on vacation. <laughs> That's the truth. I really did. All that was gone. It was all gone. See, Jesus told me the different things that was his burden that he didn't know what it was. But every time God revealed to me what his burden was, he had the inner witness. 97 miles away and the pressure began to leave him. All this awful feeling began to come right off of him. When I found the last one, it was all gone. He went, well, he came right out of that bed. He was fresh this morning. He felt so good. Oh, he was ready to go. Just look how peoples of the world, if the peoples of the church would walk with God, look at all the wonders that would be happening in communities when people said, I don't know how I'm going to make it anymore. Someone had the secret, but they hadn't obeyed for years, so therefore this one had to go without it in darkness. Didn't know what to do. Oh, it'd be wonderful if I could persuade men to obey God, to teach them how to obey God, how to hear his voice. I was in surgery, and I had to go uh, one early morning. Here I am, not supposed to get out to the board until 8 o'clock. And so here I am in great <laughs> situation. And I called the operator, and I said, I'm supposed to make a call uh, about 400 miles south of here. And she knew me well enough. And she says, all right, of course, the rule was you can't do that. But the Holy Spirit told me to do it. Mm -hmm. So she put me on the call. And when I, when I got a hold of them, they said, he said, oh, Betty has just suffered all night. But she has rolled and tossed. She doesn't know what's the matter with her. So they got her on one telephone, he got on the other, and I began to pray, and I found her first burden, the second. Through the help of the Holy Spirit, will I ever know again? It took me 33 years to begin to learn to know what God was telling me about saying, uh, singing and preaching and healing and word and scripture and truth and, and many things, as well as where these things are located and what they are. It takes, it takes God to help me to do it. See, I can't do that except he helped me in my heart. But he had to teach me in my heart how. You don't find this in books. There's no books that can teach you. It's walking with God from the start and giving him all the praise and asking Jesus to forgive us where we've come short and go right on. Don't fail. 
And uh, so I found this third burden, the fourth burden, the fifth burden. And they, they, he said, oh, it's in my heart. She said, yes, it's in my heart too. 400 miles between us. So when I get to the 41st or the 42nd burden, she said, I feel as though I've had a night's lodging. Amen. She was as well as could be. Praise God. Found them all over the world in all kinds of situations. She waited for me for 11 years. She's a graduate of Bible College, graduate of Cleveland Bible College, uh, Marion College. And uh, for 11 years, she was a burden bearer and she didn't know what was wrong. She didn't know what all was going on with her. The Lord helped me to know. I'm simply saying I needed to obey God, get on the phone, and talk to them. Yes, sir. Amen. Like when Barbara had such an experience at their home. Jesus told me 100, uh, 300 miles away to call. I called 300 miles, and I called just exactly when she needed it. Amen. Right. She just like I told two nights ago, he told me what to do in Florida, so I called exactly and found Terry and uh, Oliver, exactly what I was supposed to. And so it, it is to be as the Holy Spirit leads. We're to obey him, whether it's to pray to someone or whether it's to take a scripture to somebody or some flowers to somebody. Amen. Yeah. Oh, yeah, the, my surgeon that's operated me the first time was a double hernia. Lo long incisions, about like that on either side, like a V the lower part of the body. And my love for him, appreciation was very deep. In fact, the night before he operated me, I said, may I pray with you and may I have a little prayer? And he said, yes. And God told me he had a growth in the lung. But I told his wife, I said, never tell him. Don't tell him because God healed him of that growth in the lung. That was in November of 1970. And he has a great practice. He is a very dedicated doctor and surgeon. So God healed him the night before he operated me. And so uh, he operated me again for a direct hernia. hernia, hernia. Uh, but the first one was severe. And I had one pain for 16 hour, for 16 days, had another pain for 23 days. All separate, all different. And God took me through that. Well, the Lord laid on my heart to get a dozen roses. So I called my brother Edwin and Monticello and I said, get the most beautiful roses you could possibly get and take them to my surgeon. And do you know, I didn't know this, but a man came in and berated him and told him the hardest things. And his wife said he just kept his head because this man just, just read a pedigree to him. She said, the nurses, I couldn't help them. The nurses couldn't help them. Nobody could help them. But when those roses came, and what God helped me to write on there, I wish I had that. I wish I had what God had me to write on that card. She said, that lifted him up. Just took it right off of him. He's, she said, none of us could get, it up, get him out of it. He was so hurt, discouraged, downcast. Those roses were his favorite flower in the garden. Then he had beautiful words. We love you. You've helped many of us. Oh, this community, we're in debt to you for your dedication. I wish I could remember all I told him. It was on time. She said it came the very moment, the hour he needed it. Amen. Oh, God, had us on time, time and again for 50 years. Amen. Just exactly right. I'll be, but God's grace, I can know what to do tonight or tomorrow. I, I'm simply trying to encourage all the lambs and all the persons here to start the life of obedience. Because I, I've been, I preach it, but I've never been able to get it across to too many people in all the world. See, I've got to die out to myself to do this. You never graduate from it. Never bypass it. You never get another scheme that'll work. Just have to go the same death route all the while. You see, all of us have been looking for bypasses and shortcuts. There isn't any. It's completely, and very few men in the world have found what they're in the earth for. They live for years and years and die and have missed what they're here for. Since creation, only a few people have ever, ever waited before God so he could teach them what they're in the earth for. 
and fulfilled it by the life of obedience, and giving all. So I'm glad that you're encouraged, all of you, to let Jesus lead and guide and direct. Because it's through his guidance that we found all of you the direct leadings of God. Pressing to do God's will for a long while before we found you. And by his mercies, will we continue on? The urgency of obedience, the absoluteness of it, the wonder of it, the glory of it, the joy of it, the fruit of it. Oh, it's on and on and on. But the death that's required to know it and to experience it. So, I've had ministers say, why couldn't we just have a time when we just sit down and just talk about the kingdom of God and how, we're, how God begins to lead and how he works with us and how he operates in the heart, how he moves in the body, how he lives within us to teach us of what all men has been born for and hardly anyone has known in the age. Just only a few have been willing to just simply die out to the place where Christ has the full preeminence. So it's an awfully great responsibility upon us, isn't it? To obey the Lord each day, every one of us, and your obedience is just as important as mine. Amen. See, every one of your obedience is just as important as mine has been when I started out years ago. So I can see that if, by God's grace, if I had obeyed, in 1933, right through, see, I wouldn't have been led in 34. I can see that if I had obeyed in January 33, I wouldn't have been led in February of the same year. I can yeah. see that. I can see if I had obeyed every day, I wouldn't have had the leading the next day. Right. Oh, if we could only convince. If we could only convince. Persons to be willing to just yield themselves unto God and to follow Him. Oh, there's a light in my heart when I said that. See, that's what God wanted with the children of Israel. And so you all, you young converts, you're right in the beginning. And the Lord has encouraged you so much and you're so happy. I pray you'll never get discouraged. I just pray that you'll just shine right on. Amen. Which I believe you will. The Lord help me. So this is to try to teach us how to continue on the journey. Amen. Not grow weary with it. Well, the service is hard to dismiss, isn't it? Whenever God leads me, it's difficult for me to dismiss. It wasn't Muskegon. It wasn't Fayetteville. It wasn't Scott Depot, each place that I am, it's, it's a big assignment to know how to do it. Because there isn't any end to what God does. The body just gets tired and we have to rest a while. Mind and body can only take so much. And it's a great privilege to have the Holy Spirit lead. And I want you to know that that this is not all roses I'm talking about and apple pie and beautiful things because I have a, I have a pressing a struggle constantly. Most people think it's so easy. It's, it is it's a constant pressing for me. It's by God's grace I've made it and can make it from now on. And I want to share it with you so you won't think it's just an easy way. Amen. It's a dying way. But it's ever wonderful. <laughs> as you do it. Amen. As you follow. I thought you had it easy when I first met you. Yeah. But when I lived with you, I found out it wasn't that way at all. Oh. I found out right soon that we yeah. had to press all the way. All the way. Yeah. See, when I met you, I thought, well, he's in such glory, such yeah. victory that that uh, he doesn't need prayer. Like he, I just... Didn't see how you would. Mm -hmm. But when I lived with you, I found out, oh dear. It's greater yeah. than you're even telling. Oh, yeah, see, I can't yeah. convey can't it over at all. No, but no. I know, it's true. Yes, it's I really can't true. really get it conveyed. See, if you, can, if you live with you, 
if they live with you, they know that it's true. Yes, sir. Yes. Sir. See, that's the way you tell. Yes. Because we're with you in situations that yes. you can't convey to people. True. Impossibilities. Yes, sir. But God just comes right and helps you right through. Helps us through right. <laughs> to guide us. Oh, yeah. thank you, Jesus. Thank you. Thank you, Jesus. Bless you, Jesus. Thank Heavenly you. Father, Almighty God. Hallelujah. It's true. All right. Any other words, Sister Helen, on your heart? You haven't said very much, but you have done a lot, I'll tell you, and had faith and, and trusted. Well, we're just we're so thankful that you came. So we're thankful heart. that everybody came. Everyone, <laughs> yes. Uh, we're unworthy, very yeah. unworthy. I am unworthy I, also. We just trust that we can hear. You have oh, to yes. Say. Oh, that is so important. And uh, that we'll get it in our hearts as well get as it our heads. Into head. the heart, into the, all right, into the heart. And we're thankful for everybody that helped. Everyone. We're thankful for Mike and, Each one. and Dennis that yes. did so much work and Brother Willis. Yes. Brother Willis really helped yes. us out. He really did. <laughs> and we're so I'm thankful so for that. Right. For Each all the one. girls that wanted to furnish food and didn't get to. <laughs> we didn't need that much. And, uh, we're thankful for it. It was all so good, too. Wonderful. Oh, I mean. Praise it. the Lord. See, I've eaten in many countries. <laughs> many Jesus. countries. Many communities. Jesus. See, look at all the states I've been in in these 40 years. Look at all the countries and all kinds of yeah. food and beautiful hotels. Some of the world's best. Sure. Mm -hmm. But this food was just, oh, it's good. Oh, we're so it thankful. It was really delicious. Yeah. And the care in it, the love in it. Yes. Oh, yeah. the love and yes. the care. Yes. The seasoning of love and care was in this yes. food. Yes, wonderful. Uh, Thank you. Not just words, but really true. Yes. And we're thankful for this building. Oh, that's what we <laughs> said. Just think that the building is often rented, I believe. Yes. But those four nights for vacant, she said to you, you're lucky. Yes, she said, oh, you're lucky. I can't believe this. I can't believe that you. there's four nights. And she kept saying, you're so lucky. I said, oh, praise the Lord. She said, well. <laughs> yeah. And we were thankful. Yes, I think the four nights that the Lord had told me mm -hmm. in Michigan, this building was not rented. Yes, yes. And you see in the hotel where we are, there's, there's bands. I get mm -hmm. in a certain place and there's rock bands mm -hmm. and you can't hardly compete against them. Mm -hmm. Oh, they just bother you, you know. They make so much noise that people hear the bands. Mm -hmm. You can't think. Mm -hmm about uh, getting quiet. Mm -hmm. Oh, we're thankful. So this building, you see, an air-conditioned building? Mm -hmm. Oh, oh, we're thankful. And the lady that rents the plot, doesn't rent it, but she leases it or whatever, sure. I don't know. You just take it for a donation, you yeah. know. And she said, uh, well, I'll be going on vacation. There won't be any other activities here. So we, d we weren't pressed through the day to have parties in the afternoon and, and have to wait. Yeah. So we're so thankful. Just praise yes, the Lord. Just think of it. It's air conditioned. Yes. Yes. See, and it's where wonderful. we have been, the last two meetings wasn't air conditioned, it was a little warm. Mm -hmm. So we're it's quite thankful. different. Yes. So we're thankful for this luxury. Yeah. It's a great blessing we've had. Oh, praise the Lord. We sure yeah. thank, thank you. you. Sure. We sure love you all. Sure, sure love you all too. I'm thankful for the prayers of all of you. Faith. Oh, I think it'd be wonderful if Helen and her three lambs could stand. And then all those that's been added since almost one year ago now. Yeah. Uh, wasn't it, Helen, almost one year ago in July? And she started with, if they'd stand, I think it'd be great if the people okay. could see those. Okay, all those in this fellowship. The, well, had those three to stand first, then those that have come in since. All right, all right. Because uh, right. we've talked about this to some of the people that are here, and I think they'd all like to know yes. this group that started and then yeah. these that have been added. Yes, all right. The three then, if you please. And now, praise the Lord. Now the others. All the others. Oh, that's so good. Oh, we're so grateful. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, he's about to get it on. He wants to get you on uh, video, if possible. He uh, goes slow around, so he'll get everybody on it. Yes. Kenneth and Kathy's looking forward to seeing this when they get home. And uh, people that have 
people that see our video of our services at home tell us that uh, the Lord's really in it. So, And Roger told me that. And then when I saw it in Oklahoma, he took one out. I, I was very happy. I was surprised at myself being so happy. It's because the Holy Spirit gave, us, uh, gave it to us just to, through the video. God was in it just like in the service. Yes, Amen. He was in. He was in the service. That's the way it was in it. Yes, sir. Now, if the Holy Spirit's leading, that's the way it is. If the Holy Spirit isn't leading, it's just our idea to have a little meeting. It's, it's just words and there's no witness at all. There isn't any witness to the Holy Spirit. But if God leads it, the Holy Spirit will witness. One day it'll witness here, and the next day it'll witness over in this part of the tape. And the next day it'll witness over this part of the tape. And the next week it'll witness over this part that never witnessed before. And the next week it'll witness here that never witnessed the other times. And it's just like that on and on and on. And on and on. Never ends. All that God leads is like that. What he doesn't lead, there's no power. I can see the most beautiful things. I say, well, it's beautiful, but no, no power in it. No witness of the Holy Spirit. You see, unless God leads it, there isn't any witness. But everything he leads, the witness of the Holy Spirit is there. If we could only teach our people this throughout Christendom. If we could only convey it to their minds. But the enemy will take it out of their mind in five to ten seconds. As soon as we tell them, it's gone. He just takes it out. They can't comprehend. See, Jesus gave the apostles spatial things. Mom was saying, but they couldn't hear what he said. They considered not the miracle of the loaves and the fishes because their heart was hardened. That's the sixth chapter of Mark, verse 52. The apostles, they considered not the miracle of the loaves and the fishes because their heart were hardened. The apostles, heart. Now, if their hearts were apt to be hardened, look at how easy it would be of the Gentiles, the wild olive tree grafted in. Just like that, he takes it away, and we don't know it. We, don't, we know foolish things. We know things that make money and jokes, but we don't know spiritual things. Unless we've died enough every step after Jesus to be taught it. And then hold it to the heart. Hold it to the heart. Fortify it in the heart. Amen. Or it, it's gone. Oh, it's gone. In seconds, he takes it out. He says, then come a Satan immediately and take it out of the heart. Remember that? He said, then come a Satan immediately and take it out of the heart. Oh, if we could only teach our people this throughout the world. Praise the Lord. I get all worked up when I think about how great the kingdom of God is and the wonders of the kingdom and how of his Holy Spirit and how we need to go over this because I have dear ones close to me through the years and some of them, uh, some of them hear me and some don't. Some hear me and some don't. So I just pray that the Holy Spirit will, will help us to be able to perceive it and uh, stay humble at the feet of Jesus, lowly at the feet of Jesus. I need it more than anyone of his love and his holiness and purity. All right, any other word now in anyone's heart before uh, of this uh, precious group that's been meeting together and reading the Bible and praying? Is there any one of you that want to speak before we dismiss? Yes, Dennis. Yes, uh, Michael. Uh, we'd just like to say a word of thanks uh, from all of our hearts. Uh, we were deeply touched when we received the witness that you would be coming here. Uh, many of us, some of you may not know, but many of us took a... a uh, a week's vacation and drove to West Virginia to hear these to just to hear what words might come out of these mouths by the witness of the Holy Spirit and we attended a service in one of the most beautiful churches I've ever seen in, in, in all of my life yes sir there were over 628 people on an average attendance is that I believe that's the truth that's right, that's I believe right. that's the case we sat in a group, one of hundreds, and we thought, oh, to, to touch this man, to get just to, just to be near him. 
And then when we got the message on the phone, he said, he called and he said he'd be here the 25th, 6th, 7th, and 8th. Didn't know what days of the week. No, I didn't know what the Just knew the dates. No, that's all I knew. I hadn't even looked for days. To we're know what grateful. Days were. That, I don't go by the days. I just go by what he tells me. Praise the Lord. We're grateful that you would have been sent here. We're grateful that the Lord loved us enough to, oh, to send oh, you yeah, here. Oh, yeah, my heart. Well, he loves you a long time, I'll to say us. that. To bring me here. We're unworthy. Oh, that's and we're, a great privilege for me. We're, we're grateful that you would have been obedient and calm. Yes. See, I was, I was as happy to come to you all as if you were the greatest band of warriors in the world, which you may be. <laughs> yeah. Yes, sir. That's how happy I came. I couldn't have been happier going to the king or the queen or the presidency. I, I was true. here. I know that's true. Uh, if all of you that live with me, you know it's a fact because, the because see, uh, the Lord's helped me so I never tease, I never have teased my children or played tricks on them or kidded them or my wife. Because, uh, see, that, that doesn't go with the wa walking with God. It goes with carnal men, women. It goes with carnal people. All carnal people like that. Fighting, arguing, teasing, fussing, fuming, money, prestige. Recognition goes with the carnal life. And the Lord taught me not to say anything I didn't mean. Because I agree with the Lord. So I came just, I came as happy here. If I were invited to the great cathedrals to speak, I don't think I could be as any, I don't know how I could be as happy as I was when I came here Monday night. I believe it. And I'm not just, I, I I'm trying, my wife knows that, my children and my warrior's here with me. Oh, yeah, he, tell, he can tell his heart is true. But I just want you to know that it's a high privilege to go where Jesus tells me to go. Amen. If I'd ever had a doubt, which I haven't, when he, when he gave those dates, he said, do you have a calendar? And I said, yes. He said, what day of the week is that? Yes, that's right. Most, most people would plan on a weekend or a middle of a week they plan it that yes, way plan. but that that real that spoke to me more than anything when you said what day of the week is that yes. i thought that was wonderful it is i'm so grateful because see, i don't go by the days of the week i just go by what he tells me in my heart whether it's the first or whether it's the third or where it's the 20th mm -hmm. i don't know what just like when he told me in Scott Depot, I was going back to Israel for my 16th pilgrimage on the 11th of December. Mm -hmm. I didn't know for days yes. it was Sunday. I've never gone to Israel on Sunday. <laughs> but I don't go by Sunday or Monday or Tuesday. Right. See, you don't go, when you go with God, you don't go by anything of earth. You just go by what the Holy Spirit says. That's the way it's been in my life. Of course, my wife, she don't know what I'm going to do. We may go down the street. And I said, here, we stop right here. She said, we are. I said, yes, right here we are. What are we doing? Well, I'll tell her. Oh, she said, really? <laughs> See, I can tell her what she did 39 years ago tonight. I know what she did 39 years ago tonight. I know what she was 40 years ago tonight. 39 years ago tonight, she played the piano for me, beginning a tent revival that lasted for 52 nights in Red Whoa. Key, Indiana. Wonderful. Forty years ago tonight, she was with me in Texas. I arrived there the last of June. She came the last of July. And so the Lord knows where he wants us and what he wants us to do. Will you follow? Will I follow? Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Well, that's something to rejoice about, that the God is on the throne. Amen. <laughs> And Jesus is looking for the people that will just follow him and never turn back. And we'll give him all the praise and all the glory and all the honor. This Amen. sister told me before service, she said, I want to thank Jesus for the blessings he's given us here in this meeting. Well, I think it was wonderful out at Scott Depot. I didn't know what to expect when I went, and my dear son said, Mom, I want you to go out to West Virginia with us. And I'd had a kind of had a trip planned to Florida, but really didn't have the finances to go. And the good Lord provided the motel for us. 
and all these wonderful friends that we had out there, and we had just grand prayer meetings in those rooms like nothing you can imagine. And then you, we came back, and we were so all wound up. Oh, my gosh, I've been wound up ever since I got back. It's just hard. <laughs> it's just really hard to control yourself sometimes. Oh, what a joy. And it's just wonderful to get up on Thursday nights. You know, you look forward all week to Thursday night. It's just... It's just great. You never know what's going to happen. You know it's going to be something exciting. And I think what we loved out at Scott Depot and here is the love that you all have shown. I have never in my life seen such love. And I've always went to church, but I've never felt what I have now. I'm so thankful. We're so indebted to Jesus for this. Great love. Praise the Lord. It's great love. That's what the Lord showed me the night of my being filled with the Holy Spirit. That, uh, that is what it's about. It's, it's the divine agape love. It comes from God. That's Michael's mother. Yes, thank you. Thank you. So we're very thankful that you were able to have your mother and your companion with us in Scott Depot. I'll tell you, it was a great privilege to have you over there. We went into the meetings utterly nothing. And God fed us on the manna and helped us miraculously. And then did a miracle for him one night. Did a miracle for him. Amen. Told me. He didn't tell me he was suffering in the heart, up the shoulder, down the hands. He was suffering so bad he didn't know whether he could live very much longer. Now, the suffering was so great. When I prayed and asked Jesus, the Lord told me he lived three days. And the Lord then revealed to me. He revealed within me the prayer. And Jesus went up, came right through, clicked in his heart, my heart. Went right up, took all that out of the inner heart, took it all out of the arm, cleared down into the hands. It just all fell out like a leaf falls out of a, out of a tree. It was just gone like that. We had a medical doctor stand. He said, well, that's, he said, that's, that's clear beyond because for this kind of a, an attack and, and for it to be gone, you just fall down. It's a situation. But God did a wonder there. Amen. And he revealed it and he did it for Jesus' glory. I praise him. Praise God. Thank you, Jesus. We're so dead to him, I am. Praise the Lord. We're very, very grateful, Jesus. All right, let us stand for the closing prayer, please. Thank you again for all hospitality and sharing and all that you have done. I want you to know that someone sent $1,000 to pay the hotel bill. Wonderful. Praise the Lord. So whatever you sent in here will... It'll just be whatever the Lord shares. Amen. Someone has sent $1,000 to pay the motel bill off. Wonderful. So you don't have to worry about that in the morning. Thank God. Thank God. That came in. It just came in. This was sent. Now, isn't that great? It is. It's wonderful. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Yes, it is. Thank you, Jesus. All right, then. Uh, my wife would, just a moment, we're coming with the thank you. To have someone think of uh, uh, providing this type of uh, instrument for the services here in this community building. Ordinarily, we've gone for all these many, many years, and we'd have something like that sitting over in the corner. Oh, and uh, yeah. sometimes it would cooperate, and sometimes it wouldn't. <laughs> so it's it's really been a pleasure, Carol, to have oh, to yes, be yes, able yes, to play yes, this yes, this yes, week. Yes. It's been wonderful. Oh yes, it has. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's right. And to be here, and it really had. Well, it's as my husband said, this is just as great as the cathedral, as far as I'm concerned. We've oh, been yeah. in all types of things all these years, yeah. and I was trying to think. I don't ever remember thinking, "Oh dear, I wonder what we're in this place for." Because no. I just never thought that. Oh, no. We're Whatever delighted. it was. <laughs> we're delighted. Whatever kind of a place, you know, it was. Well, yeah. So just, thankful to Jesus. Try. Tent or wherever it is. Yes. Just thankful to oh, yeah. oh, yes. be there. Be able to be there. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Trust the Lord for help. <laughs> yes. I was happy wherever the Lord sent me in one place as in the other place. Whenever he sends me, I'm delighted to be there. And uh, you told me a few years ago, wherever God sends me, that's your home. That's right. That's right. He told me that on his own. I didn't ask oh, him to tell me. Oh, oh, 
He just said, wherever the Lord yes. sent you, that is like home to me. Yes, sir. And the other men would say the same, I know. Wherever oh, Jesus yes. leads, they're delighted yes, about it. Amen. Yeah, wherever Jesus leads, it's a little bit of heaven yes. there. Amen. <laughs> Whether it's a handful or a thousand. Just That's make it difference. Been. Yeah. <laughs> so we're, we must be grateful. We know we're unworthy, but we're grateful. All right, going to have Fred pray the prayer. Would you come up, Fred? He's going to pray. Martha Eleanor, would you come, please, and Mary Louise? Thanks for all your coming in, those who came in tonight from Indianapolis, and Paul and Sarah, Amen. and all of you that have come from other areas and all the visiting states. We've had people here from Illinois, West Virginia, and uh, Indiana, of course, and uh, Missouri, and uh, tell me now, help me out, Oregon, uh, yeah, we mentioned Illinois, thank you, uh, somewhere else, Florida, Pennsylvania, Michigan, isn't that wonderful? Here to this little meeting. That must be about six states, anyhow, represented here with us. Yes, uh, Stephen? I don't know about everyone else, but we've been treated like royalty in the home in which we're staying. Oh, yes. And I'd like to express gratitude. Oh, yes. All of our people have just been... The hospitality of all of our people, that's real kind, Stephen. And all the others of our staff and uh, brothers and sisters and dear ones all want you to know that that is uh, uh, repeated over and over. Amen. Uh, by each one, not just repetition, but really uh, uh, meaningful uh, love and care. Yes, uh, dear one. I'd like to say something, if I may. Um, we have been so blessed with the people in our homes. Um, I have Edward and um, Jackie are staying in my home. And today I told them I didn't want them to leave. <laughs> I've had such a time of sharing that I've been so blessed. And uh, this meeting has helped me so much tonight. I was in such a valley before I got here. And I've been lifted to the mountain. And I'm so thankful. And I yes. praise God and give God all the glory. Yeah, yeah. Well, we were in a deep valley when we came, I'll tell you that. We were that far below the floor, and after a while, he brought us way up here somewhere. Uh, only Holy Spirit could ever do that again. And we praise him for it. All right, it's hard to dismiss, so we thank you all for your love and care and your prayers. Remember to pray for us each day and different things that, that we're faced with and that uh, we need that God will lay it upon your heart to pray for us. All right, we will have the prayer now. Fred, Martha, Mary. Loving Heavenly Father, we thank Thee, we praise Thee, and we bless Thee for the wonderful time, the precious time of listening and learning and witnessing. And We just don't know how to give Thee thanks, Lord. We just thank Thee, O Lord, for Thy great goodness to us in... Uh, showing us thy ways, Lord, and this wonderful example of, of uh, life who is uh, following uh, the Lord Jesus Christ. So, Lord, we do not know how to thank thee. I thank thee, O oh God, for bringing us here together.